Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a quick play. Here we are playing Beavis and Butthead on the Sega Genesis. Look at that. We have a little bit of an introduction right here. Check that out. We have the copyright Biacom 1994. I hope I don't get my video banned. And we have a Beavis and Butthead right here. The introduction on the Sega Genesis looks pretty good. And I believe this is the title screen right here. It's a nice animated title screen. It looks just like the uh, animated series. And you might be asking yourself, why is this on the top horse Sega Genesis games? Because you'll find that in a second. It has nothing to do with graphics. The graphics look fantastic on this game. So before you go into the game, you have a little introduction right here. It has a little storyline, pretty much the same as the Super Nintendo version. Uh, yeah, as you know, Beavis and Butthead love war. And they want to go to a war concert, and all of a sudden that bastard dog decided to eat the tickets. Look at that. Ugh. And this is the game right here. Uh, what makes the game suck? I'm just going to say ahead of time, so I'm not going to spend forever playing this. Uh, it's very, very difficult to play. Really, really broken in some parts of it, and it's very misleading because a lot of people went out and bought the game, rented it, and it ended up being a shitty game, basically. That's basically what happened. I mean, first things first, it's kind of hard to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do. There's a lot of stuff you can run around and pick up. I mean, what the hell is that? Now, I don't know if it's just me or not, but I could have sworn that the core... Tickets were uh, eaten by the dog. I'm not sure if they went back in time a little bit, but they, the tickets look like they're right there on the poster. And uh, right away, once you get to a level, you're immediately screwed over because you have some crazy bastard right here shooting what looks like pesticide or something at you. You have a skateboard down here that uh, inconveniently attacks you as well. Some nasty bitch that just smacked me for no reason. I'm not sure what her problem is, but... Let's see if we can jump over her and walk around here. Looks like we have a drive through We have a hot dog. And like I say, this game has like no perception of where you're supposed to walk. I just walked right across the road to the bottom of the screen and somehow I ended up back here. And there's like nothing in the, in the dumpster at all. So what the hell is the sense of being back here? What the hell? Look at these freaking rats. That looks like just something right there. Can't carry any more stuff. Come on. Well, how much stuff can you carry? And right here, there's like a code that you're supposed to type in. I don't know what the hell this is. I'm typing a bunch of random shit. That, that didn't work. I mean, what the hell is that? How do you die from a skateboard? Come on. And all of a sudden, you end up here in some... uh fiery pit hell. I don't know what the hell that is. It looks like a freaking sewer filled with blood. So here we are playing inside the house. What the hell is that? Come on. Right away. So you have some crazy bastard swinging a billy club at you. And again, that with that stupid freaking skateboard. I don't get it. This room's for sick patients. Well, you know. Oh well. Look at that fat son of a bitch. I didn't know there were a lot of smoke in the hospitals, but Check that out. He's actually smoking a freaking cigar or something. What the hell? Oh, man. I'm being chased by the, the naked fat guy. What the hell's going on here? Get his ass away from you, you fat son of a bitch. Oh! What the hell is that? That fat bastard crushed me. Let's try out a different level. Whoa, let's try out the mall, I guess. Let's go to the mall with Beavis and Butthead. What can possibly go wrong? What the hell? That guy again? Man, he's everywhere. So we're inside the mall. Looks like we're inside the pet store here. And for the most part, you can't really play this game unless you have a strategy guide or you look up exactly what to do because you have to pretty much do a bunch of random shit in this game just to, you know, get to where you need to go. Think of it almost as like a point and click game. What the hell is that? Food Mart? Shopping cart? Alright, so we're inside of a... Uh, I don't even know what this place is, but they're giving away free oil samples. And we're taking an elevator up to the second floor. And we have the same exact characters over and over again. I mean, this is one of those games that, at first glance, it looks pretty damn cool. But once you play it, it's like, not that good at all. It's really not. And this guy's shooting plungers at us, which is ridiculous. What the hell? The damn skateboard's everywhere. It just sucks. You got a pair of pants. I don't know why you need pants. 
That's basically it. That's all the game is. I mean, the angry video game nerd reviewed the game. And it pissed them off. So I have to trust this judgment. This game sucks. So here we are with our second game right here. On the top worst Sega Genesis games. This is episode number three. Now, I believe this game made the uh, Super Nintendo list as well. It was Batman Forever for the Sega Genesis. And once again, just like the uh, Beavis and Butthead game at first glance, the graphics look nice, but once you start playing the game, it's like, wow, what the hell is this shit? Look at the title screen. Look at this. I guess that's about it. It goes straight to the main menu. And we're about to start the game right here, and we have uh, Batman spinning in circles. He looks almost like an action figure. Look at that. And then we have Robin. And before the game starts, you have a nice little fancy... Uh, Introduction. And the Super Nintendo almost had like a 3D type effect, but this one has a whole bunch of words they have to read, which I'm not going to read all that shit. I don't think so. And you're supposed to choose a bunch of crap right here, which I'm going to skip over because none of it makes any damn sense to me. And right away you can see it's digitized like Mortal Kombat, so it's like Mortal Kombat and Batman had a baby and out came this piece of shit. You can uppercut just like Mortal Kombat. Ooh, how do you like that, son of a bitch? And what the hell is that? It just freaking blew out of the door. What the hell did he use? Dynamite? Fucking farted and came out of that door. I knew something smelled like shit. Nope, oh, it's just a game. That's what it is. I mean, look at that. Look at the message that just popped up. Solve my riddle. Blah, 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 blah. Who the, who the fuck wants to solve your riddle, huh? It's like fucking Mortal Kombat. You just walk around and you uppercut the fuck out of people and that's it. This is that fucking game where you have to jump up to the next level up there and it's kind of weird how you do it. I forgot how I... I thought I was down up to do it, but now I... I don't fucking know. So just to let you know, there is a way of jumping up to the top part, but... This game has such weird freaking controls that are messed up. I mean, the only thing that's normal is the kick. And the punch button's fairly normal in the uppercutting, you know, that stuff's normal, but when I hold down start, that's what he does. Okay, this is weird. There is definitely a way of doing it, but I don't know. Oh, wait a minute, wait! What the hell is that? Oh, that didn't do shit. How the fuck do I get up there? I'm going to have to look up how to do this shit. I'm pushing a bunch of buttons. I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Just to give you an idea. I mean, I looked up the moves on this. I still can't figure it out. I mean, it says push Z for a high kick. But when I push Z on this controller, I'm not getting shit. I could have sworn that you had to jump. Is there a hole in the floor right there? What the fuck? There's like absolutely no indication that you're supposed to go up here. Every time I play this game, my cat throws up, as you can hear in the background. What the hell? So basically, it takes you forever to learn how to play the damn game, because uh, if you walk away from it for 10 minutes, you have to look back at the move set on the game again and try to figure out how to play the game. The move set's awful. Here we are playing Iraq War 2003 on the Sega Genesis. That's right. Iraq War 2003 on the Sega Genesis. Look at that title screen. I mean, where the hell did they come up with the idea of this game? Obviously, the real deal, the Iraq War from 2003. Now, this game came out, I believe, in 2003. So, this game came out around the same time it was happening. And uh, this is a little sample of what the game looks like. It looks pretty much... Sort of like a light gun type shooting game, but you're kind of like in first person perspective. Right now they give you a whole rundown story on the game right here. And of course you have like real figures in the game like George W. Bush and that guy right there and George W. Bush. Start the first stage, last start, or you can enter a password in. And right now we're going to start. What appears to be Iraq. Alright, so I fixed the controls and I can see this is what the game looks like. And basically in the game, the only thing you have to do is kill. 
So it's almost kind of like a training exercise, I guess. Not really, because you're not really learning anything off of this. But, like you see there, those are what I assume are terrorists. And you have to actually shoot them with the, uh, the weapon right here. And the controls are not that bad, and the gameplay is as basic as possible, but... Now, one thing that confuses me, I'm not sure if those are actually terrorists or not. I, I can't really make out... They look like they're wearing regular BDU uniforms. So I hope that those are not United States soldiers or something like that. So that's kind of like what they look like. I don't know if it's just me or not, but they look like they're wearing regular uniforms. This game came out way past the uh, Sega Genesis lifespan. It's basically an exploitation of what was really going on in the world at the time. And it looks like we have some type of a Black Hawk helicopter here shooting at us. And again, I, I'm not sure whose side I'm on and who those Black Hawk helicopters belong to. I mean, graphically, the game does look pretty good for Genesis, but the gameplay is very, very basic. And you see, can you actually use this weapon right here to take out the helicopters? It shoots off what appears to be rockets or something like that. And it was very, very effective, as you can see there. And uh, we have more enemies coming in. And I wish I could figure out exactly which side they're on. Because, like, I don't know. To me, they look like they're wearing American BDUs. That's what it looks like to me. I'm not sure. That's basically what this game is, and that's pretty much it. It's basically a huge exploitation. It's an unlicensed game. This is a huge exploitation on the uh, Iraq War from 2003. And I'm not exactly sure where this game originally released, but well, that's pretty much it. I think it's a really, really bad idea that this game came out. And I just have a bad feeling that those guys are wearing American BDUs. That's what it looks like to me. Those are the older BDUs. I, mean, I could be wrong. Maybe over in Iraq they have those type of BDUs as well, but... That's what it looks like to me, and if that's the case, that's pretty bad. Here we are playing Action 52 on the Sega Genesis, and this game definitely is a piece of shit. Especially on the NES, it's really bad. I never actually played the Genesis version, but it's no surprise that this game is pretty bad on Genesis as well. Now the whole concept of this game is... You basically get all the games you want all on one cartridge. You don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of games all the time. Well, it turns out this is really, really a bad idea because most of the games on the cartridge sucked, if not all of them. Uh, this is a, an example of uh, gameplay on one of the cart the games we heard that were on the cartridge. Some type of a space game. Now let's check out what they have on this cartridge. So, there's supposed to be 52 games on here. Let's go through and, uh, yep, there's exactly 52 games. So, Cheetah Man appears to be, uh, the most popular game on the, the cartridge. Let's check that one out first. And right here we got the title screen, Cheetah Man. Now, we're starting off with the most popular game right here, so does he have any idea of what we're getting ourselves into? Uh, the main character is a cheetah, as you can see there. And he's basically dressed up to kick someone's ass. So the A button doesn't do anything at all, but the B button jumps and the C button hits. There is no ducking or anything like that, but you can climb up the tree right here. There's a cobra right here just trying to mess with me, but didn't get too far because I kicked his ass. And uh, what, exactly as soon as I get touched by an enemy, not even hit. If you get touched, you die. I mean, that's kind of bullshit. Look at that shit! So apparently the Cobras are the enemies. Look at that shit! Which you had no choice, it kills you right away. I mean, that does not make any freaking sense at all, but... What a freaking screw job. Look at that shit! Now keep in mind, this was... Look at that shit! So now we're back at the main menu right here. Now, since that was the best game on the cartridge, let's explore 
the other piles of shit that we have on this card church. We'll check it out and see what we have going on here. Haunted Hill. That sounds pretty interesting. Maybe it's like Ghouls and Ghosts or something like that. Let's check it out. We've got Haunted Hill. Ooh, that looks promising. Look at that. Cool title screen. Haunted Hill level 1. Alright, so this is Haunted Hill. And then this game right here... You know, it definitely looks like something of a platformer. I mean, what the hell's going on here? Look at that shit! So this game, much like Cheetah Man, the A button doesn't do shit. How are you supposed to hit your enemy by that? I mean, that's what the C button does. And the bat returns. As you can see there, they reuse the same enemy from uh, Cheetah Man. Look at that shit! You can't jump on top of the enemy, you can't hit them. So how are you supposed to kill them? I mean, this is bull crap. Look at that shit! Now keep in mind, this... This cartridge was designed for, uh... Probably parents that just want to buy one game and one game only. You're not buying no more games after you get this cartridge. This is for your kid. But I can guarantee you that parents had no idea how much blood it took to make this game. Look at that! Looks pretty fucking violent to me. I don't think that's a good idea to be get getting your kids, but... You know, back in the 90s, things like, like that were, uh, pretty normal. It's not as sensitized as it is today, so... Skater. Hey, they have a skating game. Let's check that out. Something different. So basically, in this game... <laughs> the only thing you're doing is pretty much avoiding obstacle courses. Or, you know, beach balls. Looks like a dead cat. A boombox. Stop sign, another, another dead cat. Look at all these dead cats. What the hell are they doing in the road? Let me see here. We have some filthy whore on the top of the screen that's sitting on the beach with her legs wide open, which that smell ain't coming from the ocean, just so you know. Yeah, so this is basically all the game is. This game definitely is not that hard to play. It's pretty easy. The only thing you're doing is pushing up and down and jumping. C button's your jump button. That's it. And I just crashed into a dead cat. So basically that's section 52, and I believe I might have actually made it to a, what appears to be the second level, I'm not sure. If not, it's making me play the first level again, which I don't get. Uh, there is a lot of shitty games on this cartridge, you do not want to play it. And if you were one of the kids that ended up getting this cartridge when you were younger, I feel very, very bad. <laughs> And then we have Race Driven for the Sega Genesis. I mean, look at this game. Here's the title screen right here. And for those of you who have never played Race Driven before, it's actually a pretty cool DOS game. And it's on various different computers. Yeah, this is one of those games on the uh, Sega Genesis that... It's really, really bad, but it's actually very, very impressive at the same time, which I kind of find it hard to find a game like that on any console, but this is definitely one of them right here. Now, this uses actual 3D polygons on regular Sega Genesis hardware, which is where the very, very impressive part comes into play, because it actually is pretty amazing that it's playing on the Genesis. Now, the controls really suck on the game, as you can see here. It's kind of hard to control the actual game. It has a little bit of a lag to it. Which is expected because I don't think this game actually belongs on the Sega Genesis. And uh, as you can see right there, I just wrecked my vehicle. I mean, what they should have really named the game instead of Race Driven, they should have renamed the game for Sega Genesis and especially the Super Nintendo version DUI Simulator because when you drive around, it's like you're drunk because you can't really control your vehicle. And it's like you're on alcohol. As you can see there, there's a barn. And this game uses all 3D polygons, which is actually quite amazing that it plays on either console. And uh, the Sega Genesis is definitely the older console of the, of the bunch. If you're comparing it to the Super Nintendo, which came out a couple years later. But for hardware that came out like 88, 89, for it to actually be able to play this, it's actually pretty damn amazing. If only the controls were better on the game, then maybe the game would actually be awesome to play because the frame rate is... It's bad, but it's actually still playable. But the controls are just pretty bad. And it's like pretty damn near difficult, impossible to actually play the game. Because the controls, when you hit left and right, it's like such a lag that 
it doesn't even make sense to even have this game exist to begin with. And our final game for the Sega Genesis that's pretty, very bad, is Mortal Kombat 5 Sub-Zero. This is basically a ripoff of that game that came out in the 64 in the PlayStation a, a while ago. And you're about to see a little demonstration of it right here. This is actually the computer playing the game. And you can see right there, it's basically the same, not quite the same, but a much more shittier version of a shittier game that came out on the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 a while ago. That weird Mortal Kombat game that came out that was a platformer. Let's try it out. So we have stage one right here. Now you figured you can do an uppercut in this game. There's got to be a way of doing it, but... When you hold down the down button and you push B or C, it doesn't do shit. Now that's interesting. And if you slide down forward and push B, like almost like Street Fighter, you actually do that. So that's a very uh, interesting thing because you figure it wouldn't be used in Street Fighter moves. Yeah, that thing on the wall leaking out some green shit. And I just got hit in the head by something. I don't know what that was. And again, I got hit. So we have to calculate this perfectly. That's kind of hard. There we go. What the hell? Oh wow, so I have two lives left. So the controls in this game are really shitty. And this was a fan-made game, I think, or it was uh, basically one of those unlicensed homebrew games that came out and it is pretty fucking bad. I mean, you can walk backwards. Look at that. Come on! How many of these things are there? I mean, this is stupid. Another one. What the hell? Watch, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another one down here. What the fuck was that? Are you kidding me? So here we are just trying to make it through the damn platform. This is fucking annoying. And I just got hit by that slimy green shit. My character's gonna turn into a reptilian after this. And somewhere over here that... I don't know what the hell that was, but it came out... That's it right there, and it almost fucked me up, so... What the fuck, man? I wasn't even near it. Well, I was, but I don't think I got hit. You know, and back then, Mortal Kombat was very, very popular, so I'd imagine... I'm not exactly sure when this game released. But I'm pretty sure it was the late 90s. And uh, when this game came out, I'm pretty sure... We'll see if it was on the black market or if someone ran into it. Someone's probably going to definitely buy it if they have a Sega Genesis. And uh, once they pop it into the machine, it's going to leave a really bad taste in their mouth, because... Once you get a little piece of this game, playing it, that's it. You're going to turn it off faster than, you know, game over. Quick play!